we're going to talk about RTP. When we dealt with RTP yesterday, we talked about it th purely from a theoretical point of view. Now this is more theory, but we're going to build on it a little bit because the idea is is that we need to understand what RTP is. First of all, can anyone in the in the uh, in the audience tell me why we need RTP? I mean, if you know the answer, you can chime in. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to respond. But there's a specific reason why we look for RTP. Okay, we got some response. Exactly. Uh, Dan, Dan, Dan hit it on the head. It's the fact that we're communicating using UDP. Now, what's the difference between UDP and TCP? TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. UDP stands for Universal Datagram Protocol. Now, the primary difference between the two is, is the fact that we are going to be operating in a connectioned method here where we're using reliable transport for TCP, which at first thought you would immediately think that if we're going to do this for voice and we're going to send these really, really important voice packets back and forth across our network, we would want to use something that's reliable. Well, TCP is reliable, but it's also very, very slow. The handshake that takes place between TCP session initiators and or our client and server type approach, that process would take so long. And the other thing is, is that TCP is built to be able to retransmit lost packets. We're not really interested in rece receiving or having packets retransmitted because by the time we notify the other end to retransmit it and it sends it back to us, that's part of a conversation that's several milliseconds old. So the idea here is, is we don't need that. So we're going to turn to RTP to add reliability to our UDP process. And we do that through the, uh, through the application of this RTP header. The RTP header is going to contain a port number. It's going to obtain a, uh, or contain a sequence number, and it's going to have a timestamp. Now, the fact that we have these pieces of information take stuff from TCP and applies it to this UDP packet that we're working with. So now what we have is we have a UDP packet, which is fast, small, maneuverable. It has the capability of getting through our infrastructure, and we can apply priority to it in the form of QoS, which we're going to talk about shortly. Now we have garnered capabilities from TCP that we need without adding the slowness to UDP. So what happens now is, is the system can take these sequence numbers and it can take this port information and it can gather it on the other end and it can resequence the packets if they arrive out of sequence. It can play them back in their order. In fact, we'll talk later on about something called a de-jitter buffer, which is this exact method where we're going to absorb the packets, we're going to begin, begin reassembly, and then we're going to play them back for the listener. It's kind of like skip protection on a CD player. It's going to read ahead and then it's going to play back. So the idea here is, is that as soon as we start incorporating these components into UDP, we get reliability, and reliability is what we need. We don't necessarily need the in-way handshake stuff that's involved in TCP. Now let's go back over here to the drawing because there's other elements that we need to understand. For instance, this RTP header is going to be 12 bytes in size. The UDP header is going to be 8 bytes in size. The IP header, and my body's in the way here, but the IP header is going to be 20 bytes. So the thing that we need to realize is that we have 40 bytes of header. Now we have an additional header here that's marked as our layer 2 header. If we're using Ethernet, uh, and if I get this wrong, they may take my CCI away, away from me, but I think it's 14 bytes in length. So the idea here is, is that we have this big header. I mean, 14, it's 40 bytes for the IP, UDP, and RTP headers. And it's also whatever our layer 2 uh, technology header is, is if it's Ethernet, like I said, I think it's 14. PPP, I think it's 4. There's, a, there's any type of solutions that we can use to include like frame relay. But the idea here is, is that in a typical voice conversation that's using a protocol like G729B, G729B takes a 20 millisecond sampling and it assigns a 20 byte size to it. So it's 2 zero, 20 bytes. So if you take into account that our header is at the very, very beginning twice as big as our payload, and then by the time we layer add our layer 2 capability to it and that header information, it's going to get even bigger. So what we're describing is something that's very, very top heavy. If we were to look at it, we would have this big, massive ball of information that's used to do nothing except send information back and forth, and then we have this teeny, tiny payload on the back end. Now the problem is, is we're describing a packet that's very, very small. 
So what we want to do later on is we'll talk about how we're going to get around working and making it to where these little teeny tiny packets don't get crushed by big data packets. Now, our primary focus here is, is what is going to be placed inside of this RTP header. The RTP header, I already told you, has a sequence number, it has a port number, and it has a timestamp. But let's take a very, very close look at the port number, because the port number is very, very significant. A audio stream, or any packets that have the same RTP information, so that would be me, for instance, talking to Chris here in the studio via telephones, what's going to happen is the system is going to pick a random port, a random UDP port, but there's going to be some specifications assigned to that. For instance, the random port for voice, RTP, is going to always be an even port found in the range of, it's, um, excuse me, 16384 to 32767. Now, inside that range, every even port or one even port is going to be picked from my audio stream. And like I told you yesterday, audio streams are unidirectional. So if Chris is going to talk to me, he's, all, he's also going to pick another random port. It's going to be even. And that's going to be the port used that he's going to source his information to me so that we can have a two-way communication. Keep in mind, it's two unidirectional streams or flows. Now, we've also got this other concept here on the drawing of RTCP. RTCP stands for Real-Time Transport Control Protocol. Now, Real-Time Transport Control Protocol is basically nothing but the statistics of the call. So, if the conversation that Chris and I are having via the telephones have packet drops, then it's going to be RTCP that's going to report that information to us. We can see the information pertinent to the RTP RT CP stream by going to a Cisco telephone and there's a question mark in in the center of the selection window uh, buttons. If we press that question mark and what will happen is, is on the console itself it's going to be all of the information that's being communicated by RTCP and again that's the information and statistics about our, our audio call. Now the primary idea here is, is the fact that we have the capability of using all this communication in this range. So as forward-thinking students, I would definitely make certain that you have this range of ports for UDP memorized. The other thing is, is we need to realize that we're going to pick an even port for RTP. But we know that we're going to have an associated RTCP stream for each audio stream. So the idea here is, is my stream or my, my um, communication, say it picks 16384. The RTPC stream will always be one more than what is picked by the RTP. So it'll be 16385. So it's going to be an even odd, contiguous numbering relationship that's going to allow things to be married up. So if I, if I see traffic coming from an even port and I see traffic coming from an odd port that's just one increment more, then I know that's the associated RTCP stream. Now, the idea here is, is that we have these flows going back and forth. And just like yesterday, I told you uh, I'd run into a full bird kernel in, in one class I was talking to, and he was describing the fact that he thought that everything was secure, and I proved to him that it wasn't. But we do have security capability. We have the ability to engage something called secure RTP. It's secure RTP that allows us to encrypt our voice streams. So now this is a lot of information. But there's a lot of key facts on this particular slide or in this particular aspect of the presentation that are definitely test worthy. So I would make certain to commit this to my notes and or set up some flashcards so you can go through these because this is information that you need to be able to rattle off like this. Not only just to execute the exam, but to definitely demonstrate or to realize in, in a working environment when you start putting packet sniffers on stuff and you're looking at these data flows, it's going to give you all of the information and you're going to need to know what's on this particular slide in order to be able to successfully interpret that information.